Hello. So right now we're going to be doing the finger prick um, or dermal puncture. Usually you see these for a variety of tests that you only need a little bit of blood for. What do I mean by a little bit of blood? Maybe one or two drops. You have your hemoglobin testing, the, which is your blood iron, the most common one being glucose testing for diabetics, and you can even do capillary blood gases with the dermal puncture. While the capillary blood gas isn't as desirable as the arterial blood gas, the phlebotomist can perform a capillary blood gas using this technique. So just like with every medical procedure out there, we are going to look at the requisition form first. This will be done outside, and then we're going to wash our hands. Once we do that, we greet the patient and we get their first and last name and date of birth just to verify against the requisition form Ideally, you should be having the patient spell their first and last name, just in case two patients have the same first and last name. So to begin, hello sir, I'm Alex, I'm the head phlebotomist here. Um, the doctor has ordered a few tests. May I get your first and last name, please? Denver Vasquez. Denver Vasquez, all right, Denver. Can you please spell that out for me? Sure, D-E-N-V-E-R. Okay, that checks out. And the last name, please? V-A-S-Q-U-E-Z. All right, perfect, perfect. And your date of birth? January 1st, 1985. January 1st, 1985. So I would be just cross-referencing with the requisition form, making sure that it checks out, making sure that it's the right patient because I don't want the wrong test being done on the wrong patient. Even though it might be the right patient, if I do the wrong test, now he becomes the wrong patient and it could greatly alter not just his results, but somebody else's. So we got patient information. Um, he knows what tests he's going to be coming in for. This is great. And now we're going to put on our gloves. And if you look, the table or the mayo stand is more or less organized. Again, everything is right where I can reach it. the gloves on and the gloves are not just for my safety you know I don't know what he may or may not have but for his safety as well to prevent any contamination from my fingers so what we are going to do now is clean and ideally you would be using the middle or ring finger I prefer to use the middle finger so just go on ahead and we're just going to clean the area out as it is drying, we are going to set up our equipment. Safety lancet, one time use only. Gauze pad, again, fold it in four. Now, if you notice here, I don't have a Band-Aid. Uh, some people will have the optional Band-Aid there, but since we are going for the capillary, the bleeding stops within a minute. So just applying pressure, uh, you'll actually see that the gauze pad will stick to the finger itself. And then we have our microhematocrit tubes. I like holding on to it. There's a marked end on here. You're not going to be able to see it from the camera, but that is the marked end that I grabbed it by. So I'm going to stay away from that marked end. Why? Because now it is technically contaminated. So at this point, I set up my gauze, set up my safety lancet, I got my hematocrit tube. The alcohol should be dry. Is it dry? Yes. So if you notice, there is a purpose to it. If I would have had this set up and then cleaned it, he would have probably thought that I was wasting his time. Just going to put this down on the gauze pad. Non-contaminated side up, contaminated side down. Then I'm going to roll the finger up just a little bit. And here I'm going to push. Now every safety lancet's a little bit different. But if you notice, I'm going to be working at the edge. There, grab our microhematocrit tube, grab our gauze, 
And I'm just going to squeeze that little bit, wipe away the first drop of blood because of interstitial fluid, uh, the fluid between the tissues, squeeze, and now just tap the blood and it's going to go in on its own because of capillary action. Again, squeeze. And if you look, I'm not squeezing the finger, but I'm rolling towards the end. That's what's going to get you the most amount of blood. Usually there's a clay insert that we'd be using. I'm not using that today, but it would keep the blood from moving in the tube. From here, we're just going to put the gauze pad on and apply pressure for about a minute. Maybe even have the patient apply pressure for us. Sir, can you please just apply sure. pressure and just hold on to that for a minute. Okay. Thank you. And that's really everything that you need to know about the dermal puncture. Thank you for your time.